Okay, welcome back. Uh, this is part two of my video uh, series, I guess, and uh, we're going to pick up here looking at the uh, Windows um, debugger files. So, um, my debugger, my debugger defines, and my test. I'm going to look at the code and then do a short demo. Um, one thing to keep in mind as we're going through this, and I'll, and I'll reference back to it once we get the once I get the demo running, is these event codes. Um, so we'll, we'll see these in action. Um, they're going to tell us things like an uh, exception debug event has happened, a create thread debug events happen, create process, uh, load DLL debug, um, and some things like that. So one thing to note too uh, that I've run into, I, I did most of my development in Eclipse, but recently moved out of that into just Notepad just to be a little bit quicker. Um, one thing that happened to me a lot is I get complaining, it, it complains to me that uh, indent spacing or something is off. Um, so Python is, I'm not real familiar with Python, so um, I'm just trying to throw this out there to anybody else, that, else that's, that's new to it. Um, it is particular in how the, the code structures and the interpreter expects it to be, um, that it's in particular about those indents and spacing, so uh, just something to keep in mind. Okay, so I uh, go back to my VM, and you can see here, uh, here are my three files, uh, everything else we can just ignore for now. And we'll start with looking at the uh, my debugger defines. And again, I'm just going to pull this up in Notepad and make this a little bit, a little bit larger. So um, we start with uh, an import statement from C types, uh, and then we're just going to map out some uh, Microsoft types with the C types for clarity, uh, making those all uh, you know, uppercase characters. Um, for constants, uh, we're going to use these throughout the code, um, especially this uh, dbg underscore continue or debug continue. Um, there's some other uh, debug event constants. A lot of this code, this is a fairly large file, um, a lot of it we're not going to touch. This is more for um, following the you know the example from the book all the way to the end, uh, which we're not going to do. Um, there are going to be, let's see if I can find it real quick, um, we are going to use this um, this uh, class here, um, this debug event, and just to give you know, just to show you kind of how it's structured here, it, you know, it's an object and it's going to have these different um, properties in which we'll be able to set different values to and then use throughout uh, the code um, or in, in the code. So, um, going back to that debugger, then um, from there, so, so that's going to define a lot of the different values that we're going to use. Um, again, I recommend getting that one right out of the source. Uh, now I'm going to jump over to the test file, and this is the the author refers to this as a test harness, and this is all we're going to do is use this in order to actually run our debugger itself. So um, import uh, my debugger, and then we're going to instance that class of the debugger, and and I'll show you that in a second. Uh, we're going to take some raw input and get the process ID of the process that we're going to attach to. Uh, so much like we do with Immunity. Uh, and then we're going to actually attach to it using that PID. We're going to run and then detach. So um, I don't really detach in this example. I haven't figured out, taken the time to figure out why my uh, code doesn't detach. But um, it's you get the you get the idea of what this writing your own Python debugger looks like. Okay, so um, what we're going to do here is actually look at my debugger.py. So it starts off with uh, some import statements or from statements in Python. Um, we shorthand the kernel 32. This is a, a Windows API library um, that will really it's really used a lot in the debugging uh, debugging environment. So um, just shorthand that a little bit, and then we have our actual class itself, uh, class definition right here. So um, one of the first things we'll look at is this uh, init function. It, it operates more or less like a like a constructor. Um, if you're familiar with that, and uh, all that really does is when, when we create an instance of this debugger class, we set these these properties up by default. So um, if we go back to my my test, when we create an instance or a single uh, you know single object based off of that debugger, we get some of these properties set for us by default. So uh, the none keyword in Python is, is equivalent to a null object or nothing. Um, so a lot of this stuff don't need to worry about. Uh, unless you follow the examples all the way uh, through and, and build the, what the author 
the goal of what the author has set out for in the book. Um, going back to my test then, what we'll do is I'll just step through the code that we're actually going to execute. So um, the first one will be to attach passing in the process ID, uh, so what we, we type in at the keyboard. And you can see here that uh, reference to self and then the process ID. So for the first things we do is um, open, try to open that process based off of that process ID. And here we have each process. There's that kernel 32 and then open process. And the book does a very good job of, of defining these um, different functions that we're going to call and then the properties that are going to be called uh, or that we're going to pass into it. So here where it's going to be the access rights that we want to that process, we're going to try to get all access. Um, this is always going to be false for this book and then the actual process ID and then we we'll return a handle to that process. So now that we have that, if um, debug active process, we set the debugger active to true and then we set that the process ID to what we have. Uh, if we weren't able to do that, we weren't able to debug that active process and throw an error and we would just say unable to attach at that point. Um, so next step is to run That's simply while debugger underscore active equals true, um, get debug event. So we set that to true in that attach event, and now we're just going to get debug event. So uh, if we take a look at that, very simple right now. Um, all we're doing is saying debug event equals debug event, and I showed you that in this defines. Um, here's that structure. So it just gives us, it just gives us information. Um, oops, event event code, process ID, thread ID, uh, and then this union, which is further defined up here, uh, but we won't, I won't get into that. Um, so more information about the debug event, the continue status, you don't really need to worry about that right now. Um, that's more for the code as it further develops. Um, wait for debug event, uh, don't worry about that comment, and then all we're going to do is print the event code and the thread ID. So you're here you can see from that structure, that class, that debug event, get the event code and we get the thread ID. Print it off and then continue the debug event. And then if everything was working correctly, which mine isn't, we would actually, um, eventually we would detach. Which taking a look at that is pretty pretty straightforward. Debug active process stop with that process ID. Otherwise say there was an error. So go ahead and from here uh, if you're running Eclipse or if you choose to use Eclipse, uh, you can run your scripts right from Eclipse itself and, and that works out great. Um, I'm going to use it from the command line. Uh, one thing I'm going to need though, as you probably noticed, uh, the process ID. So if you have your task manager going and you look at the view, uh, select columns, you can see PID, so your process ID. So that will show up here and then we'll just go ahead and arrange those in alphabetical order by image name uh, because we're going to want to um, see the, the whatever we fire. In this case, I'm going to I'm going to uh, uh, start uh, the calculator, and uh, we'll attach to that and see some of the codes that it that it generates. So, um, change into my window debugger, and then it's just Python, and you have to under, uh, execute my test Python. So there it is. It fired up. It asked for the process ID. So if I go ahead and start calc. And now we grab that process ID, 1364, type that in, and there we go. We see a bunch of event codes. So as I was telling you earlier, um, here I'll just pull them up. Uh, exception debug, uh, 2 is a create thread, 3 is a create process, uh, 6 is a load DLL. Um, so you can see here a lot of load DLL events. There was one exception. Um, in here somewhere, and a uh, couple, you know, process, couple threads. Um, so there you can see, and I just generated a couple more. Um, but there you can see uh, how, how fairly straightforward it was to write in Python uh, the ability to. Okay, uh, sorry for the jump there. I, I keep switching windows and pausing this. Uh, screencast o -matic, and so I, I don't realize it until after I've gone a few seconds and uh, it's just causing me some issues right now. So um, that 
why just to wrap up that that shows you how easy in a way it is to start writing um, your own Python debugger and be able to attach to processes, open processes, and then capture those de those debug events and, and handle those in any way that you you can um, you know a dream up and code. Um, the next stage or the next part of my presentation is going to be uh, I just dug into a little bit of the immunity debugger and Python and in particular the Py uh, the Py commands and just as we started to use the immunity debugger in class uh, I just thought this was something worth uh, demoing and sh and just showing the, p the power that immunity debugger has so before we begin um, I'm going to assume that you've already got immunity installed and downloaded um, it's pretty easy to find uh, just uh, searching for it and getting it um, running it uh, here is the when you open it up kind of the default setup CPU pane is, is here your registers pane stack pane and then your memory dump pane so those are the main ones um, there's a lot more options windows and uh, you know there's the immunity library which I'm going to kind of touch on um, as we start looking at the examples here so uh, pi commands is what it's called and what this essentially is is um, hold on, I'm going to go back one here um, this bottom one here this is the command bar and this is where we're going to execute those pi commands so uh, the, what the Py commands are is it's a, it's a directory that lives inside the program files, immunity, whatever. Um, I'll show you in a second here with a bunch of Python scripts, and this is the way that you can create scripts and then execute them in Python, write scripts in Python and execute them in Immunity while you're actively debugging or attached to a process. Um, they every Py command must have a particular structure, uh, and I'll we'll, we'll look at that real quick. That's a template uh, .py. Um, and all the command scripts are there. So I'm um, going to go ahead and show you guys. So here you can see um, that program files, immunity, ink, immunity debugger, pi commands. And there are a ton of built in scripts already included with immunity. Um, there are two of them that we're going to look at that are from our. Our textbook or from the, the Greyhound Python though, um, but here are, are just a ton of them. So if we go down and find the template, I'll just look at that notepad. Um, you can see here just some comments. Uh, the import this is that immunity library, uh, it's an API you can use, um, browse it from immunity itself, and then um, it has to have though, this is the main one, it has to have a main def defined a main function. Um, with that, whatever arguments you want to pass into it. So without this, your Py command script won't run. Uh, and then you can see there's usage and some other um, some other you know, functions that you can you can define as you go. So the first one we're going to look at is called findinstruction.py, and what this does is it makes it really easy to find exploit friendly instructions, exploitable friendly instructions inside of uh, immunity itself. So uh, the immunity debuggers Python libraries allow you to search instructions um, throughout the loaded binaries. And to help understand this one, I'm going to just do a demo here. Clean the desktop up and launch immunity. And I'm just going to attach to Notepad++. Plus uh, Plus. It really doesn't matter at this point what you attach to. And here, if we go down into the command line that we talked about, um, well, let me back up a sec. First, we're going to actually take a look at the script. So um, I copied this from the Red Hat Python source, findinstruction.py, into this directory. One thing to note is once it's inside of here, uh, the debugger or something basically puts a lock on it. So you can't edit the file unless you actually have it um, open Notepad through as an administrator or something. Um, so there's some hokiness with that. But um, all right, and I think I'm about up on my time limit here. 
because I'm too cheap to buy the pro version of Screencast. So I'm going to break and uh, in the next video uh, we'll come back and we'll actually look at this code and then run it while be attaching to Notepad.